terrible things can happen to man and beast alike. And they can both be the culprits behind some real horrors. It's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. Number one. I grew up in a town in which it was normal for kids to wander around. Every day I would hang out with my best friend and his dog. We were on our way to our forest hideout that we'd been working on for the last two years and were just arriving to the forest when we saw a really dirty looking Asian guy walking along with a big stick. Then he squatted down, pulled down his pants and defecated on the floor. He didn't know that we were there until he heard us gasp. He looked back, started screaming at us and then began to chase us. I ran into the forest towards our hideout, whereas my friend and his dog ran in the other direction. I didn't stop running until I got to the hideout. But when I stopped shaking, it became apparent that the guy must have chased my friend instead. I slowly left the hideout and walked towards where I knew my friend would have hidden. Except when I got there, I saw my friend with very bloody hands. I ran over panicking and shouted asking if he was okay. Turns out that he was, but the guy had flipped out, started shouting at him, and when his dog started barking loudly at the guy, he beat his dog to death with this stick. I couldn't believe it, so I walked over to where my friend said his dog was, and honestly this guy had definitely carried on hitting the dog well after he was dead as it looked like a bomb had gone off. I can only imagine how traumatic that must have been to witness. It took my friend years before he could actually tell me and other people what he'd seen. We got back to his house and I had to tell his mother what happened. She called the police and I had to tell the story on his behalf because he just froze up. Unfortunately, the police never found the guy, and they assumed he was just a crazy bum wandering around town. Number two. We live in a little town on the high plains, and though it's a little town, it's still got a couple of thousand people in it, and we live right smack in the middle. Our screen door doesn't lock, and if the big wooden door isn't closed and my dog sees this squirrel that is her arch nemesis, she'll shoot out the door and chase it up a certain tree. I was home alone when I heard her shoot out the door barking. I go outside and she's barking at the base of the tree as she always does. But when I look, it's not the squirrel that she's barking at. It's a bear in the tree. I was shocked, but I had to get my stupid dog who is still going nuts. The bear was only about 15 feet up the tree. So I slowly crept towards and reached out for my dog's collar, trying not to frighten the bear any further. I was almost there, less than a foot away from the tree trunk and the dog, when the bear freaked out and jumped down damn near on top of me. I was trying to recover from a bear almost landing on me. I felt its fur as it came down. That is how close I was. And at that moment, I was terrified. If it was afraid, it may attack. When it took off towards the backyard with my dog chasing it, still barking like the badass that she thinks she is. The bear is obviously scared and not trying to fight my dog. It just wants to run, which makes me feel better. There's a catch though. Our backyard was 90% fenced in at this point, and we were going to finish it that afternoon, and the bear couldn't find its way out. I was terrified that once the bear got tired of running in circles and felt cornered, it was going to put on one of those big ass bear paws in my dog's face. 
I was screaming and chasing down my dog. It was barking and chasing down a terrified brown bear, and probably five minutes later, though it felt like much longer, I was able to herd the bear out of the fence opening. I looked up, and there were trucks lining the road watching me, and neighbours out pointing and watching the bear run away. I still don't believe it happened, especially in the most populated part of this country. But I'm so glad I didn't lose my stupid dog to a black bear, or myself. Number 3. I broke up with my girlfriend in 2003, and gave her our black lamb, because I would be travelling. I didn't see them again. Six years later, I was in a hotel in Jacksonville, and had had a recurring dream for four nights in a row. In the dream, I would walk into a white room, and across it, a hallway that was on the other side. I would kneel down, and call my black lab whose name was Dallas. Dallas would scamper out of the hallway and run right past me. I'd call her again, and she would turn around and come towards me, and sit down in the unique manner in which she sat except Dallas was no longer black. She was white, and underneath the white fur were black roots, and her eyes were sewn shut. But she was the beautiful dog that I loved, and I kissed her on the face. This dream repeated four nights in a row, and on the fifth day, I decided to write my ex-girlfriend an email and tell her about the dream. She wrote back to me and explained that Dallas had cancer, and was euthanized five days ago. She said that she thought Dallas always wondered what happened to me, and wanted to visit me for one last time. I cried so hard, and I'm crying now nearly at the thought. Rest in peace, Dallas. Number 4 I was living in a three and a half bedroom apartment, with my mother, father, and my daughters. My eldest said to me one day, Mummy, I would really love a dog. I figured it might be fun for my kids to grow up with a pup of their own. So I got the bright idea to go onto Craigslist to find a puppy on there. Yeah, not my proudest moment. So I made an account, and searched for puppies with inexpensive to no rehoming fees. But all the puppies were really expensive. I mean, I had enough money, but I really couldn't afford for an $800 pup. I have kids to take care of. Anyway, I kept scrolling, and I came across a six-year-old white pit bull. The ad said $50 rehoming fee, and great with kids and house trained. You know, the usual stuff that someone says to try and sell you something. So I replied, and we agreed to meet up down the street from my apartment in a couple of days. Now, at this time it was something like 10 o'clock at night. So we said goodnight and exchanged phone numbers and logged off. The next morning, I woke up to my text music going off over and over. So I opened my eyes to see what was being sent to me so frequently. It was the lady with the dog. She was flipping out saying, Are you going to take her? Do you still want her? Hello? If you don't want her, I'm going to throw her in the pound. I saw that, and my stomach turned and I was immediately scared for the poor dog. So I messaged her back and said, yeah, I'll take her. I picked her up the next day, and I kid you not, She was all skin and bone, and it made me sick. I don't know what the woman did to the poor dog, but I suggest you be wary and don't go on Craigslist to get any kind of animals. You may come across a crazed dog abuser. I hope we never meet again. Number five. About two and a half years ago, At the start of summer, I was walking along the back roads that connect the town I grew up to the town I was currently living in. 
I didn't have a car at the time, and my ride fell through. But it wasn't a worry for me. I enjoyed looking at the birds and the plants. At the time, I was just beginning to study wildlife tracks and native plants in the area, so I was keen to keep an eye on my surroundings. About seven miles into my 11 mile journey, I started getting a funny feeling. I'm very comfortable in the woods, even more so when I'm alone. I feel clear headed, less distracted, and focused on my surroundings. So I took notice when I felt eyes on me. I slowed my pace and shortened my steps. I'm more of a fighter than a flighter, and I rounded the oncoming corner with care only to find the bodies of two animals. One was skinned and looked rather large. I thought possibly a dog or a very large feline. But I couldn't tell, as the face and paws were torn off and mutilated, in ways I don't want to describe. The other body had its eyes gorged out. They lay in a perfect yin-yang shape, at the base of an evergreen. Immediately, I whipped out my phone to document the horror, but my battery was almost depleted. I took a few photos and watched as my phone shut down. But the feeling of terror didn't leave me. Nothing seemed safe. I was uncomfortable for the first time in a forest I grew up in. Up the path, just around the corner, was a mess of plastic and other bits of man-made material. I didn't have to look much further to find a mass grave of over 50 mutilated dead ducks. I also found a bag of what I believe to be intestines. Needless to say, I hauled ass out of there, and once my phone was charged, I sent the photos alone to a friend, who called the police, who said, yeah, that happens a lot round there, and it has for years. Nothing more was ever done about it. Number six. I was in fourth grade when I was riding my scooter to my neighbor's house where my sister was. One house down from my destination, two pit bulls who were not leashed or fenced decided that they were hungry. So they lunged towards me and attacked me and wounded both my arms and both sides of my legs. It was a savage attack. My neighbor decided to come out to make sure I arrived safely, and thankfully she did, because she saw them mauling me. She screamed loud enough to notify the owners of the dogs, who came out and got them off me. A van pulled by and took me home, where my father tied some clean rags around my wounds and rushed me to the hospital. I ended up receiving more than around 60 stitches and was incapacitated for the rest of the summer, which sucked because it was the beginning of summer and I played Little League Baseball. It probably wasn't until senior year that I got over the whole incident, but I remember that it made me really emotional and frightened as a child. I'm 22, almost 23 now, and don't have a fear of dogs anymore, but still, I don't think I'll ever own one after my horrible experience with dogs. Number seven. I was nearly killed by a dog when I was around seven years old. It was a German Shepherd slash Great Dane mix. So we definitely aren't talking about something small. The dog was taller than me, standing just slightly above the owner's hip. I'm not sure why but the girl that was walking it didn't have him on a leash, just kind of roaming around freely. From what I remember, he was racing towards the garden and picking up an animal. And me being the gentle kid that I was, I was alarmed and ran towards the dog to free the screaming rabbit from its grasp. When I approached it, it turned and dropped the now dead rabbit and raced towards me, immediately pinning me to the ground. 
I remember writhing my head around to dodge its lashing teeth, whilst my brother and his co-workers were holding it by the scruff, and the girl was just there standing there in horror. Not doing a thing. The dog bit both my neck and cheek, leaving really deep scars, although luckily they faded now. I was taken to the hospital and got a total of 32 stitches. The dog was court ordered to be put down one week later. Number eight. My uncle was on a through fare freight train, heading home when they passed a pasture. Apparently a cow had escaped the fenced in pasture and made its way onto the tracks. Now, a lot of animals for some reason, if they are running from a train, will run directly down the middle of the tracks instead of stepping off. This cow took off in a sprint from the train as the engineer blew the horn and tried his best to slow the train. It was a losing battle though, as the train gradually overcame the cow. The coupler on the front of the engine lifted the cow by its ass and rolled it under the engine. As the now dead cow tumbled under the engine and the following cars, some part of it caused an air hose separation. This caused the train to apply its emergency brakes. Once the emergency brakes are applied, a conductor has to walk the whole train to inspect it. So my uncle being the conductor, hopped down to inspect the now gore-covered train to find the air hose separation. About four cars back, he found the separation and coupled the hoses back together. As he looked up from the hoses, he noticed the tail of the cow hanging down from one of the knuckles. My uncle, being kind of a gross ass, thought it would be funny to bring the tail up to show his engineer so he grabbed the tail and pulled a little to dislodge it from the knuckle and attached to the tail comes what he calls a meat donut, which is of course the cow's asshole. Number nine. I was 12 years old riding my bike in the community I lived in. It was very hilly and had windy roads and it was a nice day in the fall. I was coming down a hill fast, when a dog darted out and started chasing me. I thought the dog wanted to play, but then it showed its teeth and started barking angrily. The worst part is that the bottom is a hill, so I had to pedal fast uphill as the dog was biting at my bike. Eventually I tired out the dog, and luckily was distracted by the tire and was tearing it up. I didn't want to run in fear that the dog would chase me, so I had no choice but to stand and defend myself. I was in the middle of a road when a car approached. The driver tried honking and shouting, but the dog was fiercely attacking and paid it no notice as it savagely destroyed my bike. I slowly backed towards the car when the dog set its sights on me. I hauled ass and barely made it into the car thanking the driver profusely. The dog was batshit crazy when the owner finally caught up. After security showed up with my parents and animal control, the dog was taken away. I got a new bike out of the incident and the owner was fined for not containing the dog. Luckily, I left unscathed, but still, it did not deter my love of dogs. Number 10. I was working on a research project during college to determine the residual feed intake for a group of heifers, cows, from a massive farm in Georgia. I was just hired help, so I didn't do much with the data. My job was to sort cows into the sweep tub, which is basically a big gate that we use to push cattle into a chute one animal at a time, so that they can be treated for disease and injuries or just to be weighed. Every two weeks, we'd weigh these cows 
and I would sort out groups of four or five out of the 12 to go into the sweep tub, close the gate behind them, and get them into the chute. One day, about a week before Valentine's Day, I was running the sweep tubs again, and I had to get a cow out of the corner and into the sweep. She decided to do a 180, and the next thing I know, the head of an 800 pound animal is hitting me in the chest. My ass is pinned against the gate, and her hood is coming down right on my crotch. After making a male nurse very uncomfortable with my story, the doctor said I was very lucky, because the wound was in the best place possible. Luckily, the cow didn't turn me into a eunuch. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. So, are you a cat or a dog person? Just to let you know that my new campaign that I had just launched was suspended by Teespring, because apparently, their detection bot assumes that I don't have the rights to sell anything with the Mortis Media logo. So, I have to wait for them to manually approve my campaign with my own logo before you can get the merch you've been asking for. I just don't seem to have any luck with these automatic detection bots. So this time, all of it is out of my hands. I'll keep you guys posted as soon as they get back to me, and I'll let you know as soon as it's out. Oh, and for everyone in Europe who's itching for apparel, we will be releasing a European merch store in the coming days, so that you guys don't miss out. And remember that if you enjoyed today's video, please consider dropping a like and leaving a comment. It's a really great way to help support the channel, and I appreciate it tremendously. And if you'd like to do something incredible, to help support the channel even further, feel free to visit my Patreon. You can find a link to it in the description, as well as the links to my social media. And if you want your story read on my channel, you can submit it as a text post to Reddit, or send it to me via email. Both links can be found in the description, and I can't wait to hear some of your horrors. But anyway, for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.